Hi guys, welcome back. It's uh, Nick here once again with our transport game in Unity 5. And we're back on working on our chunk management system that we continued from the last episode. Um, but there's a few things before we actually dive right in that I've noticed that are sort of slightly wrong with our system so far. I'm just going to play the game for now so I can show you what I mean. First problem is when we initially load up a world no chunks are generated. You see we have no messages in the bottom here. It's only when we move the camera for the first time that we actually get our uh, message up here that says we're generating some chunks. And the other issue we've got here is uh, even though we are adjacent to the 0, 0 chunk, that's not being generated and that's because when we initialize our visible chunks they initialize to 0, 0. So the game already thinks that the 0, 0 chunk is there when it isn't. So we're just going to jump in and fix those first of all. Uh, I'm going to delete this debug statement because we don't really need it anymore. So the first thing was uh, when we first loaded up there was no uh, chunks loaded. So what we need to do is uh, call this on camera move function when the terrain manager initializes. So I'm going to go back up to the start method and then bottom here I'm going to do call on camera move and I'm going to pass it camera dot main dot transform dot position and that should mean that when we load up the game we uh, generate some chunks so let me just test that okay so you can now see correctly we get these uh, Seven, no, eight messages generating eight chunks. We should have nine though because we need the zero zero chunk and that's the second fix we're going to put in here. Instead of initializing our visible chunks variable to a new vector two, I'm actually going to initialize it to null. Uh, so that means the zero zero won't be in there. Uh, and that's quite, that's going to reflect some code down here. So if we try and access visible chunks now, if it's null, we're going to get an error message. So we need to add a new if statement here say if visible chunks double equals null what we want to do is simply break from the loop so we don't loop anymore and I realized actually these continue statements here on this line and further down in this line as well these both should be break statements because uh, we want to leave the loop there because we don't need to loop anymore uh, rather than just continue on to the next iteration uh, so that should fix our problem. It might give us a null pointer exception. Uh, we'll give that a go. Okay, there we go. So we now have nine statements. You see we have this generating zero, zero, which is much better. And uh, as we move the camera around, you can see it starts generating more chunks as we require them. Uh, another issue I've sort of noticed with this script is because the chunk size is quite small, uh, we generate a lot of chunks as we're moving around the, the generate method runs quite a few times um, I think we're going to play around with this setting a lot but for now I'm actually going to up the uh, chunk size um, so I'm going to go back into the script and at the top chunk size x and chunk size y I'm going to double that to 256 uh, I just think that will give us a bit more smooth gameplay and stop us stuttering every time we uh, generate a new chunk and it also means as we look into the distance uh, we can see a bit more world rather than beforehand we would have uh, a problem where essentially the world would stop very quickly okay so this is great we're getting these uh, generation met messages we can't actually see anything in game at the moment um, that's because we haven't implemented our generate or load methods but for now this is uh, exactly what we need the final part of this before we actually go to generating terrain is once we've finished with a chunk, we need to be able to save it back. Uh, so for that, we, we've got our load chunk method. Now we also need a, uh, a void save chunk uh, to memory. And I'm actually going to pass a terrain object here. So terrain, I'm going to call that chunk. And also it needs to know the uh, vector2 uh, index of that chunk. So now we need to keep track of the actual terrains that are going to be keeping track, um, 
sorry, you keep track of the terrains that are loading the graphical representation of adjuncts. I'm actually going to add another array at the top here. So this is going to be a terrain, and then the square brackets, which means it's an array. And we're going to call this chunk graphics. And again, this needs to be initialized to null. There we go. Um, and this is what's going to be, this uh, array will be filled in with uh, new chunks when they're generated. Uh, so in the generate chunk, chunk method, we also need to know uh, where to save it in our uh, chunk graphics array. Okay. I might modify this later into not being null, but I think for now we'll leave it like this. Okay, to save a chunk to memory, um, we need to work out uh, which chunks are no longer in use. So we have this one which works out which chunks are in use. We now need to loop through and find chunks that are in the visible chunks array, but not in the new visible chunks. Okay, to implement this, we're actually going to, inside this if statement here, we're going to add an extra clause just before we set found true. So um, if the chunk is found in the visible chunks, I'm going to set that chunk to null. So that index is not there. And this is fine because we actually, um, oh, we can't set it to null. Uh, we'll just set it to a new uh, vector2 just do um, minus 1000 by minus 1000 just for now we'll add a wildcard value here later um, uh, instead to uh, show that this chunk is required and then at the end here what we need to do is loop through the that needs to be outside the for loop, sorry, it needs to be down here. We'll loop through the visible chunks, and if it hasn't been set to this uh, wildcard value, we'll uh, assume it's no longer needed. So we'll, again, we'll reuse i as our loop counter. So i is less than 9, i++. Plus plus. And we'll say uh, if visible chunks at i is not equal to a new vector two minus one thousand minus one thousand. Then um, we want to save the chunk before it disappears, basically before we um, lose that. So we want to do call save chunk to memory, and the the chunk the terrain for that is going to be chunk graphics at i and the index is going to be visible chunks at i. I'm actually going to make one more change. Um, instead of using this minus 1000 I'm going to add a new um, public cons constant and I'm going to call this um, vector wildcard. Uh, actually that needs a type so it needs public const vector vector two vector wildcard which is equal to a new vector two minus let's do ten thousand this time just to make sure it's out of the usual range and instead of this here I'm going to insert the vector wildcard value. The advantage of doing this is um, if later on we find there's a value that we don't need at all we can just replace it and it gets replaced everywhere in the script and it saves us having to find all of those instances. It's good practice to replace any sort of numbers that you've got hard coded like this is probably bad practice and replace them with uh, either constants or, or variables because uh, then if you want to update your code it's very it's easy to keep um, correct. So now we're saving these chunks I'm just going to add a debug log right here. So I'm going to say debug.log um, and I'm going to say unloading chunk and I'm just going to copy and paste this code up here because we've already done it before. There we go, so we got the index there as well. So let's hope we don't get any errors. 
Oh, we can't declare it const. Um, we'll just call that static then instead of constant. Uh, which essentially does almost the same thing, except you can change the value later, but we just never will change that value. So we'll give it a play and see if it works. We get a null reference exception. That's terrain manager 137. Okay, I think I know what this is. Um, if we go down to where our code was down here. Uh, so in this loop, uh, if the visible chunks is, n is null at the beginning, um, then this, this will throw an error here. So you just need to add a final check to say if visible chunks of it calls, uh, sorry, is not equal to null, then do this loop. I'm just going to copy this loop directly inside that if block. And that should remove that uh, null reference exception. Uh, in practice, it's probably best not to use a null uh, reference, uh, but for now it's probably one of the only things that's going to work. Unity is a bit weird in the way it uses nulls, it's not a standard system uh, null reference. It actually includes uh, th this null that actually represents a full object, which contains information about sort of w which object is using the nulls or where it appears in the script, so that if there's an error, uh, like for example the one here, it can uh, pinpoint the script, and if I uh, say click over here, it um, can pinpoint the line, and it should be able to pinpoint. There you go, the object in the game that represents it. So nulls are a bit um, inefficient, but for now they work fine for our purposes, at least. So we'll see if we got rid of that error. Okay, that error is gone now and let's just uh, walk around okay we've got the error back let's have a quick look where that is uh, appearing okay that's just because our chunk graphics is not initialized um, and we'll deal with that in just a moment okay so we have these um, terrain arrays here uh, and we, every time we load a new piece of terrain, we could create a new terrain object. But instead, I'm going to use a slightly different method of doing this, in that uh, we reuse the same physical terrain, we just change all of the data about it. So for example, this terrain, we could just load in a new set of heights, and then everything would be fine about this terrain. And we'll move it to a new position. Um, and we would there'll be no need to go and create a new um, terrain object like this, which would add quite a lot of inefficiencies. So at the start, we actually want to initialize this um, array to contain nine terrains. So I'm going to replace this null with a new terrain. I'm going to give it nine elements. And then in the start, I'm going to add a for loop to populate those terrains each with a uh, a terrain object inside that it index in the array. I'm going to do um, trusty i for our loop counter. i is less than 9. i plus plus. Actually, I'm going to change this 9 to um, chunk graphics.size just to not be such a hypocrite about my um, constant thing earlier. Uh, Believe, yeah, it's, it's trunk graphics got length there to get the um, length of that array. So uh, to create the terrain game object, we can go um, game object and switch geo for game object equals new game object. I'm just going to call this, um, I say geo.name, and give it a name like uh, chunk underscore. And then I'm going to add the array index i, so we've got a number. And then I'm going to say geo dot add component, and I'm going to call uh, go in here and do this as new 
Once we've got our terrains, what we need to do is populate their data fields. Um, so we need to say, actually I think this uh, add component will return a terrain. So first we need to save the terrain object into our array. So we say chunk graphics at i is equal to geo.addComponent terrain. This will save back the terrain component. Then we can say trunk graphics at i dot terrain data equals new terrain data. And this should populate the terrain information with the uh, values it requires. We'll just give this a play to see if it uh, works correctly. Okay, so if we go back onto the scene view, we can see that we've got a uh, chunk zero right here. Uh, it's complaining about not having a collider. We'll fix that in a moment. But if we move it, we can see we have um, we have a flat terrain here, which is what we we're going for. So, um, and if I use the tools, I think okay, I think it's still uh, complaining about this collider problem. Uh, once we fix that we can um, start working with these terrains. So I'm just going to check what kind of collider we need uh, on our terrain. So what we need to add is um, just a terrain collider. So the last thing we need to do is just say component and let's type in terrain collider. And that should prevent the area we'll get in a moment ago. I'll just hit play. Okay, so we have no error messages at the moment, and if I go into the scene view, focus in on the terrain, we have these uh, terrain planes that are created, which is exactly what we wanted. And I believe if I um, had to pause and edit those, I'd be able to change the height maps on each one. Okay, I think I've gone on for way long enough in this video, so um, we'll continue on this in the next one. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I've been Nick Pearson.